and shaping it and supporting it. So, yeah, it's 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 very it's been a very interesting space to watch. And we we offer such a big uh, you know we offer such a big counterpart to traditional sports also because. When tra- it's a counterpart, but it's also the same, is what I'm trying to say. Because it, it, when you're traditional sports and they're done after their two a day workout and they're done after their practice scrim, they're coming home to play Call of Duty and relax and put their feet up and get a drink and play video games. It grows their brain, problem solving skills, uh, and, and their hand eye coordination while they're home. Hand eye coordination, if you're a football player, massive skill, massive skill. Mm-hmm. So um, it helps build those things while they're off the field. And then for us, vice versa, if you're an esports athlete, one of the errors I had growing up when I was competing in esports is that I was not active enough. I, I played sports, I competed a little bit, but I wasn't active enough truly when I look at it. So that's one area that esports players can learn from in terms of activity and physical and the marrying of both. People say, oh, sports and esports, video games, not really. We're just kind of the tech industry's competitive uh, form of um, competition as to where traditional sports are more physical hands-on. So I believe in the marrying of these two sectors and that they actually live together while also being counterparts. Well, I think, I think then to speak to something about marrying, right, from traditional to esports, um, that to me speaks to this whole new thing, at least, again, from you guys, right, you guys have more traditional sports background, right, Paul, Lee, Mike, um, and all that, but I think let's talk NIL then, because I think that's something that I think is really interesting. That at least when I heard about it, right, of what we're trying to do with, you know, esports athletes, schools, programs in general, um, because it wasn't something you would think normally, right? You could understand, right? Football player on the field, star quarterback, it makes sense, right? The guy is somebody that everybody knows on campus. Whether you're, you know, whether you're on the team, off the team, or you're just going to the school, it makes sense. But I think, you know, nowadays it's it's not as common or people don't think that they could be somebody that their name is out there right or that they know they're known right as as we're growing the space as we're we're putting this together it almost feels really interesting that you know star your star entry you know your star entry in valorant or your your star forward on rocket league right whatever the case might be now they can have nil deals it's a it's a thing out yeah. there and, and i think i don't know maybe mike you want to start off but yeah like, yeah yeah, I think, yeah, thank you for teeing that up. So uh, I was talking for too long. I, uh, I forgot to bring NIL into the mix. So it's a common occurrence, uh, occupational hazard. So I would say that, uh, so NIL for, for uh, I'm sure most of you watching understand what it is, but NIL stands for name, image, and likeness. Name, image, and likeness, that term has been utilized to describe the transition of traditional student athletes, NCAA athletes, and their ability to monetize their name, image, and likeness. It went live July 1st, 20 of 21, and it has continued over the course of the last 14, nearly 14 months now. Uh, It's an interesting term because it's been co-opted to describe the NCAA's approach to student athletes being able to make endorsement money or uh, be able to monetize any part of their name, image, and likeness, but it's been around forever, right? We've had athletes endorsing brands for over 100 years. Babe Ruth of the New York Yankees was endorsing brands 100 years ago, and it has continued onward from baseball cards all the way through now where we have lots of different integrations of how uh, influencers can monetize their followings. So what I would say on the traditional side is it's still a very young space. There are a lot of stories out there regarding NIL that tend to focus on the negative or how out of control, I put in air quotes, it has gotten. But there is still a burgeoning marketplace for many more student athletes that are involved. About 17% of NCAA athletes are currently involved in NIL, but 65% more than that want to get involved and are curious how to get started. On the flip side, brands are challenged with a few different things in the space. There are 10,000 professional athletes in the United States. Once July 1st, 2021 hit, and you dump every NCAA athlete into that space, that's another half million. So brands that maybe didn't have a dedicated athlete strategy when there were 10,000, now have 500,000 plus that 10,000 to figure out how to activate who they are. That's a lot. I understand brands hesitancy in some instances, but I can tell you that companies like us are on a daily basis educating brands and student athletes as to the software you can use, the types of activations you can get involved in, 
and how to utilize your followings or if you don't have to or want to be a social media star. Greetings one and all and welcome to ECAC on the Esports U2 broadcast. My name is Pyro J. I'm joined here by my friend and exceptional caster, Mr. Epic, and we're here to introduce the Central Methodist University or CMU against the undefeated Fanshawe mm -hmm. Fuel. Epic, I got a feeling we've got a wonderful match ahead of ourselves tonight. I sure hope so, because the records indicate that. The 3-0, and the 2-1, and both these teams have only lost a combined eight games in between them across three weeks Ooh. of play, which is really impressive considering we play best of sevens in the ECAC. And this is critical for both these sides because these are potential playoff teams meeting at this middle point in the season, which is very important for momentum and kind of keeping your head um, above water at this point because there are a lot of teams in the ECAC. So you want to make sure you stay towards that top of the table and i mean fanshawe want to say undefeated cmu want to put an end to the undefeated run this is a big best of seven yeah great teams great records and not only keeping their head above water but maybe learning from this match as mm -hmm. well it feels like these two teams could easily meet in the postseason so how do how does the regular season stomping grounds this week number four of right. eight weeks and from this league uh lead you into growing to be ready for that final step so as he said blake seven games maximum in this new set for ecac it used to be best of five now it's best of seven we're <laughs> truly gonna get that best team to come out for the win today Oh, and I, I honestly have a feeling that we could go all seven, but we'll see what happens. We were looking at the, the ranks earlier, and Fanshawe has a, a GC2 average, and that mm -hmm. in the collegiate level can be daunting for some teams, which we, I mean, there's a GC3 on the CMU side in Phantom, but they don't exactly have that same GC2 average of play, but sometimes a team can be greater than the sum of their parts, and that can be their strength. CMU is 2-1 and one after all. They've only lost in a full oh seven-game series. So we'll see how they fare. And already a good start off kickoff. Uh, the good start in my eyes, Bepic, is the fact that we have three scarabs on the field for <laughs> Fanshawe FC. That's right, folks. We said they were all GC2. Well, guess what? They're all dressed in style tonight. Will that be their lane to victory? I. Th this is a unique sighting to see. Well, they say dress for success, and Fanshawe is certainly doing that. Scarab is a unique car, and I, I think Fanshawe backed that up with a unique pile of skills brought to the table we'll see though i mean we've already seen a, a potential ceiling play out of them but it has been mostly possession going central methodist university's way it's a nice ball center but no one quite there to receive the pass from adam so minute in we've seen a lot of time spent on the orange end and finally something to show for it yeah, we were alluding to this result for quite some time now. Central Methodist University is spending a grand amount of time here on the orange half, and they're able to collect what they've been looking for. I do wa worry as well for Fanshawe about some of the space they're providing a potential mm -hmm. star player of Phantom. I saw one end, he was able to drift and cut into the midfield take it up the wall with no contest and that's why you gotta worry about it phantom a goal from long distance wow there wasn't even that much space given to phantom there i mean apple pie was in phantom's face it's a risky challenge but one that apple pie apparently felt comfortable attempting but phantom won that ball clean and what a shot on undefended net 2-0 cmu but we're starting to see more possession being added to the, the the FC time of possession stat, Pyro, and uh, that could bode well for them, but they got to keep the ball in the blue end. Got to keep it there and register a shot as well. Still three to yep. zero on the yep. side of CMU, but wipe that all away. We've got our first scarab shot to the back of the net at space. Dan, just let that ball get a little bit too far out in front and. That is that first shot. You're right. All they had to do was put a shot on target, and mm. we're starting to see why Fanshawe is undefeated so far. I think we are finally getting an inkling of what we may see a flood of towards the rest of this series. Remember, again, a long series here, folks. Best of seven. A first win is certainly what you want, but it will not oh. tell the full result. 
Me, oh my, Phantom, he got started earlier, and he's giving no signs of letting up. It's Phantom for yet another Adams. <laughs> Pepe, I didn't see that, the cheeky dump. <laughs> yep. And I, I do want to point out as well, this is the, the perfect moment to talk about it. Adams and Phantom. We, we ask for fun facts sometimes for some of these teams and, and team managers, and we were told that Phantoms and Adam both queue together and just use comms in Spanish, which is not their first language, by the way. So they queue together just on the regular and calm in Spanish. Which I think is so impressive that you know a second language well enough to queue and play at this kind of level. So the chemistry is definitely there, which we just saw on display in the midfield. And how important is that too, Bebic? It is not right. just to take a professional look at this game and always have hard comms, but have fun with it too. You can tell CMU, they're smiling from ear to ear now. Phantom setting up GAN to make an approach here. That's his first participation in a goal. Now we've got all of CMU rolling. Well, I was talking about Abs and Phantom being a dynamic duo, but Gan certainly got in there as well. Created by Phantom, again, looking to be that star player for CMU, and so far, they have been. I mean, two goals, two assists on the four goals that have been put in for CMU. Phantom definitely playing the part of the, the star player, and here they go again, to the air, looking threatening as ever. Adams is so confident in Phantom, at least getting a good challenge, that they're pre-jumping that ball. Fanshawe better start getting some territory back, because CMU looks so confident. Maybe with a long clear, they can do just that. It's broken up by Adams. He's gonna have to take a boost and wants to work off that goal line demolition, but the pinch it goes weary for them. We'll send it back. Square one, Phantom off the ceiling. Great read, but Adams a bit too wide to get the second touch. Gant forced up, and that impending attack from FC is going to be cut short with that demolition. The disruption play has seemed to raise its ugly head in quite an egregious manner here. Cars are blowing up from every other end of the field, and as we stay, kind of stamp put here with the 4-1 score line and more demolitions. No, we will not stay still. And FC will rival back. It's apple pie this time. The fire and the flames goes that shot. Nicely done. Grabbing one back, Fanshawe. You're creating a way back into this game. I mean, it was it was bad there for a second. CMU was really rolling, but that kind of play with a stop to the momentum and it's a little bit of vigor back in the comms of FC. And this kind of, this play had some venom to it. That was nicely put across the blue box, and we see a comeback after all. There's plenty of time for it. This fight back is reminding me of what you talked about earlier, Bepic, was the fact that this team is undefeated, but has also right. only dropped three games. That is monumental, being in week four with these best of sevens, with a, a total of 21 games played already. Losing only three of those is uh, quite immaculate, and you can tell they, they are going to make a comeback in order. They are going to give it everything they've got to keep that great record going. But how much time are they really going to get for that, especially with CMU with that ball on the other end? Scarabs going to have to pull something fancy out of their magic hat. It's a good clear by Apple Pie. Not going to really grab that corner boost, but we'll find a touch on the ball. Space just waiting center, but and wisely leaving that for Adams and Phantom to clear the zone because Space, again, was waiting in the box for a mistake to happen, and it didn't. So having to reset from their own end, FC. Not going to find much, except Adams carrying this ball with a ton of boost in the tank and a lot of space to work with. That's going to be game one, more than likely, and CMU has certainly earned that tick mark underneath their name on the scoreboard because the, I mean, that player right there as well as the entire team effort that was on display in the first game here. But the long series, FC has plenty of time to respond. Well, you said it, Bepic, a team effort for Central Methodist University to get their first win in this long best of seven. We had questions about the CMU team and whether that team effort would prevail. Phantom was a player that really stuck out to us at the GC3 mm -hmm. level, one rank shy from the top rank of Rocket League, folks. So you expect a player like that to kind of run, run the gambit here on the field, but you can tell that despite the two goals and two assists that Phantom put up, everybody was still had having a yep. piece of the pie during the series. That was just an all-around great performance from CMU, and I'm very interested to see if they can keep that up because their playmaking ability as well as the, the capitalizing on mistakes were 
all on display, and it's up to FC to change that. I mean, the demo plays we saw starting to leak into the rotations for both teams, honestly. I got taken advantage of once. That was the second goal for FC. And then the, the one shot that they put on prior to that second goal was just a nice pressure play in the blue box. So, I mean, it's there. The offense is there. Just got to make sure you shut down Phantom somehow. And Adams and Gand as well. It's going to be a difficult road for FC, but they've got the playmaking to get it done. Yeah, they've got the playmaking. And listen, you asked about the attack, if it was going to be there. I wonder if it's going to be more fully surge if they decide to change their cards mm. we saw that full <laughs> scarab look from the undefeated team just exuding confidence and it will stay three scarabs i count them on that field still they believe that they can uh find these wins in style Bebek. only two shots in the last game Scarab's definitely going to be a, a point of contention if they do continue to be outperformed on the offensive side of things by cmu but a lot of time before we start making points like that. 30 seconds in, it was all spent on the R, the blue half, rather. But we have moved into the FC end for a short little bit. Space will find a clear force Gan into the air. And Mark Henry has a little bit of space, dumps it off to Apple Pie, and their first time shot blocks. Clear from Phantom. Not the case. It'll be a 2v1, but Henry wins that out. Uses all the boost in the tank, but that's all right. Not, not, nothing too scary coming out of the CMU offense just yet. Not quite yet, and oh. you know, with four goals having been given to CMU or, or earned from CMU in the last game, uh, keeping that shot count low in the first minute of this game could be seen as an accomplishment from Fan Shaw. So, a couple goose eggs will keep this game all knotted up. Space is definitely going to be forced to make a save there, and leaves the boost for oh, himself, Gand, next up to the play to knock off the ceiling could translate into a pass phantom though playing the ball slowly and this is exactly what phantom wants is more space on the ball more touches as well just to control the pace of the game try to get a couple more of those assists that he got in the last game more t up more midfield play still zero zero vantry with a lane with a solo play trying to jam the ball down space a little too far ahead to the play to get the follow what a beautiful second touch from phantom apple pie was ready for it credit to him but Phantom so good at finding those deft little hits with their front bumper, whether it's a pinch off the ground to push the ball deep into the opponent's end, which is where we stay even now. Adam's going to keep it there, putting it off the back wall, using Apple Pie's Scarab. Great success. Phantom shot a little bit short of being on net, so space allowed a clear, and 0-0. Zero, zero. The defenses have prevailed so far. FC could break it open here, but... And Phantom going to link up to get the ball out of the center circle, but it is going to stay in the blue end. Fanshawe coming into this game feeling a, a lot more staunch and uh, stubborn mm. with their gameplay, making sure that there's ooh, someone in rotation on the back end. Barely is Apple Pie going to be able to find a way to clear that ball, but more chances for Phantom. A double tap on the backboard is going to really uh, make uh, FC a little wary here in this situation. But again and again, they find a way out. They find a way to contain players like Phantom. Adams, though, Ball on the hood. Phantom has to get back quickly on this ball. Able to send it to the corner. Still, zeros. It's two minutes. There have been a couple of moments when the ball's left the blue corner where FC's been caught out very nearly. But here, Phantom, the player almost caught out. But they do rotate back in time to make a big save. Keep us at those two zeros. Apple Pie making things weird for Adam. Space the same. But Phantom has their teammates back. And... Won't be a clear for CMU, but they're surviving for now. And that leads to this 1v1. Gand versus Apple Pie. And once again, Apple Pie with their creative-looking Scarab going to find a clear for their team. And FC won't be conceding just yet. Just yet, Van Rie. Oh, I wanted to see the Scarab cooks your pinch, but not this time around. Sorry, the Batmobile is the acclaimed car for that move. Van Rie, though. Still wants to get the best angles on the ball. After picking up a container, a boost is taken off of the field. Another goal line demolition on the side of FC. They've only got one player for a moment there. They're trying to recollect. They're trying to reposition. But how do you position around a pinpoint accurate shot like this? Gand goes crossbar down for the first goal. 
Adams in reverse backed the defense off with that ball because they were so close to it. They, they could have made a play on it or they could have missed completely and decided to make a play on it. FC respected that fact and Gand ha hit an absolute laser. Pyro, that was a beautiful ball. Bar down and in and once again, CMU on top, but open net going the other way. Gap will be closed nicely as Space didn't have the boost to get to that ball quickly. FC playing from behind, but their offense has had a bit more success this game putting pressure on the CMU back line. Success in numbers, but not oh. that number on the scoreboard. An opening for Gan to dip it to Adams. Still on the shooting lane will be Vanry to keep away that second goal and keep the hopes of Fanshawe alive. Space looking for a reset. Can't find it. Instead finds two defenders crashing on the ball. Could it be that double commit that opens a lane for FC? Not quite yet. Adams with the little remaining boost there gets a touch. Gan has to read this ball and does so beautifully. Just the doink they needed to keep the high pressure situation away phantom another press space to keep the ball close earn those extra 50 50s those extra touches just to wow. give their team a chance it's not gonna be had the game will end and cmu earns another game win by only one goal i mean much better defensively played by fanshawe they limited cmu to just one goal five shots down from the nine that they had in game one but their offense wasn't able to do enough in this game as well. I mean, losing by one is, is kind of painful when it's that 1-0 scoreline because your defense played great and the offense was there as well that they were putting opportunities towards net. They just couldn't quite turn them in so close on several occasions. And now I start to wonder if that's the Scarabs doing because it's, it's those small touches that changing cars will alter for you and it's switching from an Octane or Fennec or whatever these players normally main unless it is the Scarab in which case uh, <laughs> my point is completely wrong but if it's not their normal car then the Scarab can can do that to you just slight changes making you miss mm. shots by by inches yeah, and listen, even if it isn't the car, it is worthy of pointing out how well some certain mechanical plays can set you ahead of your opponents. Like, mm -hmm. we saw the one play of uh, an attempted flip reset to just, just get that last leg pass a defender and get a goal on the board for FC. Instead, the reset was missed. It can be more difficult when you change cars, and whether or not it's the body of the car, it's still those close chances for fc mm -hmm. to take the extra step get that mechanical play and whether it's double tap flip reset make it happen it could be all that's needed bepic especially when you consider it was just one single goal that split the difference for these two teams and i'm so glad you referenced that play because that is the play that made me think of that point in my head i was like yeah. I, I gotta mention this because <laughs> i saw apple pie with a lot of space given which is a, a rarity when you're playing against cmu has been playing very very quickly in defense and they they weren't able to do anything with it and the two defenders had to deal with a a lofty ball towards net instead of a unpredictable flip reset so we'll see in game three if the scarabs do stay on the field but down two games to to nil headed into game three this is an important juncture in the best of seven because it is the the three zero score line that we normally talk about is kind of the the breaking point for a team in a best of seven because best of seven reverse sweeps don't happen often at all in rocket league mm -hmm. but we'll we'll see Faro, what can happen this is collegiate rocket league anything can happen at this level and i see zero scarabs on the field Okay, yes, we are getting that change after all, folks. If you're not familiar with the most popular cars on the field, it's the Octane, the Fennec, and the Dominus. We've got two Fennecs and an Octane, which means we may have the, the highest potential of the Fanshawe squad. Is it too little too late, or is this exactly the turnaround that they need? They're already looking at a decently open opportunity. Space trying to make way and bump out the defender. Good physical play and disruption. That could be part of the solution for FC. A shot goes off the backboard. Vanry has to follow. It's deflected, but it's still in prime territory for Fanshot to attack on. Space up the wall. Kind Kind of trying to read this off of the corner, but a clear gets CMU out of the woods. The oh. redirect so close for Adams, just off the crossbar. <laughs> the potential to be one of the, the highest of highlight reel plays we see tonight, but Adams couldn't quite get around the ball. Instead, Apple Pie forcing an own goal off of the Adams octane right there with some great goal line pressure. 
Wow, and yeah, this is a mistake on the side of CMU, no doubt, but Adam's really no choice mm -hmm. there because you see, yeah, the, the menacing presence of FC on their opponent's goal line, it's gonna force that chaos every time. And it's not just a goal for Fanshaw, it is their first lead in this series, can be more important of a turnaround for them. That was a nice demo by Adams, rotating out of the play, didn't have the ball anymore and said, found a car, but unfortunately doesn't result in anything. And now Phantoms uncharacteristically missed a ball there in the corner. Vannering and Space couldn't quite capitalize on it, but that's a bit worrisome for CMU. Now down a goal in game three, which is not a spot they've been in too often in this series, if at all. I'm not sure they've been down outside of this game, but they look a little awkward at times. Here I'm wondering if it's going to get capitalized upon or if their offense is going to make up for things with a play like that. Yeah, Phantom was one of those players who we were expecting that if CMU were in any type of sticky situation, he would uh, carry the torch and lead the way for this team back into the fray and coming out alive. And uh, there was quite the fray there. A lot of defenders in the lane, but threading the needle, they were able to equalize right back in business. Ooh, Adams, the pop to Gand. No, Adams going to finish it off themselves. And that's just a straight up tear through the back line of FC. They get through the corner with ease, and then not sure what happened there with Gand, but Adams does find that second touch through the last man. And wow, that's a quick lead found back by CMU. The best I can describe Gan's presence there was emotional support, okay? He was <laughs> like, hug. Adams, you got this. I'm, I've got your back, man, both emotionally <laughs> and physically right there on the top of his car. And uh, hey, sometimes it takes that friendship, that support to get you through to your extra point. That's exactly what's offered for CMU. They're looking to make matters worse for FC. The possession continues for them. Phantom, those extra touches, that dunk that presence around the ball at all times is such a nuisance for Fanshaw. they do have a chance to form a counter-attack but phantom instead taking it away very oh, vertical cool. play here back and forth adams with a read could <gasps> score off of the post and it lands away cmu so close to a two-goal lead i was i was a bit overconfident there in adam's ability that was a tough shot that they just barely missed i mean they were right there eventually putting in the third but CMU has so much pressure and at the moment this is slowly being taken away by FC which is great news for them because now down a goal they have to find something soon final two minutes of play there's a shot on and finally turning the tables back on CMU who won I think the the second minute of this game with it felt like 60 seconds of uninterrupted pressure well that's one form of pressure space getting a demolition there and you're right how the tempo has really changed in this series for Fanshawe to almost equalize the amount of pressure space. Oh my goodness, one of the cleanest air dribbles we'll see this series down the field, which does enable Apple Pie to try and continue the pressure from the corner. That won't happen though. Gans does see some midfield presence from CMU. Can't find the pass, but Phantom off the ceiling still has a flip. Saved by Apple Pie, backboard from FC is playing out in their favor. Good positioning on defense, but they do still need that extra goal. This last minute going to be vital. So important for them, as if they don't win this game, if they don't survive here, they'll be forced with a reverse sweep, which is all too difficult. Right, and they have to start winning the battle for the midfield, and it's slowly shaping into their favor, but that, and that turns to a battle on the offensive third for FC. and. That they have not won thus far. Just three goals across three games, which is decent, but not enough to be in a strong advantage in a series. 30 seconds left now, and slowly starting to lay the foundations of pressure. And then the final several shots in this game, maybe just one. Oh, there's the shot I was hoping to have out of that play. It's space instead of Vanry, but I'll take it. Great ball. And Vandery, yeah, I was looking at an extra touch there, but it was all a fake. Okay, Space yeah. is ready to move at a moment's notice to orient that ball to the top corner. Could that have been the turning point? Could that have been a confidence boost for Fanshawe? 
get themselves and their heads back in this series. Ne next 20 seconds could tell all Adams. The shot denied by Apple Pie. There to be a contender of what could have been the worst result for Fanshawe. Adams, though, again, as a nuisance of space is there on the goal line. He's there to survive, but how for how long? Bantam can't get the shot to go. The ball's still alive with Apple Pie. Oh, so close to it. Adams does no. see a team pitch off the crossbar. Are you kidding me? We're going to overtime. That was very nearly, again, one of the highest of highlight reel plays we will probably see ever. But unfortunately, the uh, Rocket League gods are not interested in having that, uh, that go in. So we play on. And Space has a 1v1 against Gand, who backflips perfectly to disrupt that play. And buy some time for their teammates to get back in the, the scrum that's currently going on in this blue corner. Great challenge taken by Adams, though. No one there to receive except for Apple Pie. Shot taken. Again, will get in the way eventually, but first 30 seconds won by FC. They want a tick mark underneath their name. They want a way back in this best of seven. Let's see if they can find it. Yeah, because if C of you oh. don't take this win, well, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, Bebe. That's the goal right there. Space makes the moment count from earlier on, and certainly does it there with the read off the backboard in magnificent form. Fanshawe win game three. That was another pretty shot. Finally, FC starting to, to match the clip output of their counterparts. CMU has dominated that category of statistics so far, but that shot from space should be on their, their personal high right. well, highlight reel. Big game win in game three in overtime, no less. They were inches from losing it in regulation, and that's, that's a big win for CMU. Glad to see them on the board because they've played hard in this series and they've deserved a game win. If this ended in a sweep or anything mm -hmm. close to that, I, I would have had a, a sour taste in my mouth. Yeah, it, it feels like that, right? From an undefeated team not getting a win does appear mm -hmm. to be perplexing, right? But this is exactly the turning point that I think Fanshawe are asking for. They they switch in their main cars. They keep a cool head throughout the match. Remember, they were down by a goal with about 30 right. seconds to go in that game. So the ability to keep that mental strong throughout the series is, is clearly a result of this team. And let's be honest, any winning team in some of these these leagues so with that strong mental with uh what i heard from fresno state yesterday from the uh mountain west conference with that god mm -hmm. mental maybe they can turn the series around and hey with one more win can even this series mental such a hugely important factor when it comes to collegiate rocket league especially when you are playing i mean you're playing at weird times sometimes you're playing teams you've probably never seen before and you've never played against and you still have to find ways to score speaking of which phantom and adams dynamic duo open up the scoring in four well, there you go central methodist university how many top corners have we seen this match? So we may have seen two godlike plays that just haven't gotten finished, but I will tell you the precision, the shot taking of these players has been uh, nothing but eye opening, impressive. Uh, but some of the double commits are there as well, though. Central Methodist University have to stay communicative, and no matter what language it is, they gotta make sure that that they stay very strong, headstrong in this game. They've got the lead, but for how long? Could extend it here. That's a nice double. Van Ray to pre-jump and then flip back into the ball as the momentum almost carried them too far. Past the save, but not the case. Still just 1-0, and Apple Pie going to find that save easily. Backwards ball off of Adam's car, and Van Ray was there to pounce, but... And a defender there to block it. Phantom drop down for Adams. Gand upfield, but not going for any kind of pressure play. I think just maybe waiting on a pass. So going to have to retreat. The pass never came. Good defense by FC. They're holding on for the time being, but slowly working their way into that offensive end. That kind of sums up how they've been playing, Pyro. It's slow starts, but they gain bits and bits of territory before scoring. Mm -hmm. And explosive ends, too. I mean, again, the, the shot taking has been nothing but pristine, and sometimes that's what it can take to get you over the edge. Right now, Tanshaw just trying to find a way out of their half with that demolition. It doesn't sort out well for them. Gan has a good shot here. Gan wasn't able to register a shot last game. So they're trying to regain that confidence in this series. But 
uh, being muddled down by their defenders, by Gan's opponents. Apple Pie in perfect position to pick up this ball, but bumped out of the mm. way. Phantom could have had a goal there. It's a wide open net, especially after the demolition, but just sent it to the side. Adam's looking for the top corner again, can't find it, and Apple Pie doesn't dive quickly enough. Phantom scores again for Central Methodist. Why score an open net when you can just as easily piece together a great three-man passing play to score your second goal? I mean, that, that's what CMU must be thinking right now because that was phenomenal. Out of the corner, to that back wall, right at that crossbar where it could go bar down and put the defense in a weird spot or just go straight out and put the defense in a weird spot. Either way, a weird spot for FC to be in. And now down two goals in another pretty important game in this series. They're going to have to find a way out. They've got the time to do it, but... I don't know close the, the gaps that CMU are filling with scores. Ooh, momentary 2v2 demolition on either team there. And Adams takes uh, takes the torch and leads the way for their team to get out of that fray. Sending it across the field as well. Apple Pie is actually going to get that hit past the defense. That's going to offer them a ton of space here. And the rotation, ah, just a little too slow for Fanshawe. They, they work off of it instead of take the Ooh. shot. That's going to be something from Vanry. Space looks for uh, the dunk on that ball. And Vanry actually is going to have a look. The defender's very slow to it. Vanry, is there a reset? There's an extra touch. It's off of the post. And the clash on the goal line sees out a first goal for Fanshawe. Now, the great question that we'll never know the answer to is, does Vanry pull that off in a scarab? And oh, we will never know. But the fact is they pulled it off in the Fennec. They get their team back within one. They get a little bit of momentum back on their side. That's that's such an important goal at this, at this juncture because it's a low shooting game for both teams. And that's the fourth for Fanshawe. So the fact that they score it, pretty big. And I'm interested to see if they can build upon it. But uh, CMU looks pretty keen on responding with a two-goal lead reinstated, though. They're going to have to clear their zone first. Yeah, CMU, they were looking to score there after they were working off a good kickoff, but there was a momentary double commit between Phantom and Adams. We've talked about the communication about uh, these players and how they seem to be very synergized, but it can be those small mm. moments when both players jump to the ball. What? Did offer a moment for their opposition? Fanshawe, they're coming up with this goal as Van Rees skies to the ceiling and pinches it. Are you kidding me? That can't be legal. Come on, ref. Get it. Get out. It pinches off the ceiling. We're seeing that now in the collegiate Rocket League space. Are you kidding me? Wow. That's that's huge for FC to have. And we're tied up in the final 75 seconds. Phenomenal comeback out of Fanshawe. This is why they're undefeated. It truly is. Yeah, you, you can tell they have so many tools in the kit here. Uh, so oh, much no. mechanical ability. Van Rhee, that is a clutch touch right there. Not good enough. It almost lands in his top corner, but Phantom's there to seal the deal. That's not why they're undefeated right there. <laughs> That's a great play out of CMU, though, to take advantage of that space after the ball took that inadvertent glance. I think that was Van Rees Fennec that it uh, went backwards off of. And then the bump on space, very crafting out of CMU to get their lead back, even after the crazy ceiling pinch we saw out of Van Ray. So final minute, CMU back where they would love to be, I'm sure. And FC, they've done it before. They have to do it again. Come back against this in indomitable uh, CMU side. CMU just simply won't back down. They're, they're that team that no matter how many you many times you punch them in the jaw, they get right back up to fight even harder. I, I mean, uh, this lead right now that they're still somehow able to have is just monumental. Look at this give and go. No, it's a three-person play there. Space was ready for that pass, but guess what? Phantom was ready for the save. Right now, there's not many defenders on the goal line. Phantom has to cut the rotation to kick it to the corner. Gan trying to clear and uh, deliver themselves from this pressure, but Space just has more to save for. What a finish to this play. An immaculate air dribble from Space. Just stuck the ball to their front bumper. Maybe applied a little bit of glue before that play, but either way, it works out absolutely beautiful. Took it ground the top shelf in a matter of moments. But Phantom has the ball in the air, has boost. We'll have a block on this clear, though, and Space 
Try and double it, won't find it. That Adam's Mitch should get us to overtime. Oh. It does, overtime in game four. Oh, I've been here before with these two teams. Why not again? Extra time to determine if ZMU will be on match point and Phantom, well, in pretty good position for just that. Adams doesn't win this 50-50 space looking for that pass to Van Rees. Slow to it, but there enough for the challenge. Adams does have space with this ball, so does Phantom. He needs to slot it for the shot. Space and Van Rees double commit on the side. Gan wants to punish them for it, but just can't make it happen. Instead, it goes to Phantom again. Space clears away. Fanshawe were in a bit of a scary situation there, but they're able to stay alive. That has been the name of the game for them. This entire series, pretty much, ever since right out of the gate, CMU came out and phenomenal first game that's a big save from space and uh, real quickly take a step up the, the step stool it's that top shelf make the block and again stay alive vannery what is it gonna be to enable fc not have to allow their opposition to get to match point Really want to tie up the series, but they're going to need something different for that. Adams trying to get into that rotation to take the shot. Now Apple Pie looking to steal boost, but it's still granted to Gand. Vanry, oh. uh, bottom of the car on that ball. That's not going to propel it any farther. Adams, ball control on the dribble sent away by space. Vanry looking to flip towards this ball and offer a challenge to Gand, but it won't be there. Slow playing in the mid midfield to determine who's going to get possession next. It stays on the side of CMU. Phantom knows Adams is ready. They just can't get this ball to a scoring chance. Yes, they've had time on their opponent's half, but where have the threatening shots come from? Nowhere yet in the last minute. You're right. It seems to be possession found, and then we stay in the corner for a little bit. Maybe a ball across the blue box, and then clearance. And that's what we've seen here, though. Redirection not found by Vanry, and then space faked out by Phantom, though. Territory will be maintained for now. Adams again a little bit back for CMU. Gand ball on target. That's saved by Apple Pie. And to moving forward, keeping the ball in play for CMU. And Vanry's last man has to have an important touch, which they will. And We'll play on. Two plus minutes so far. This extra period of Rocket League that we were so kindly gifted mm. here in game four. And no one's really close to ending it. The opportunities have also slowed down on the CMU side. Yeah, they most certainly have. I think it speaks to why we needed this match. I think that uh, these two teams very equally contested, uh, given how much they're able to sort of stand up to each other's attempts here uh, in, in overtime. And why they're not looking so threatening is because uh, these teams are not afraid to dig in their heels uh, and play some hard-nosed defense and await their opponent's mistake if it ever comes on the rotation. No mistake, uh, not not too drastic there for Fanshaws. They're able to break out space now oh. with some kind of take towards the post. It's not enough, but space has always been that player to surprise. Could he do it again here? Shot blocked by Adams. He's looking for the pass to Apple Pie. Oh, Apple Pie can't get there quickly enough. Adams sends away, and no matter how many times space tries, he just can't finish the job. Off the ceiling, CMU being pushed further and further back into their end, and Phantom won't be able to bail them out this time around. And that carry denied exit of the blue end. Space off the ceiling, trying to get it to Vanry with that heavy touch, but the defense will get... No! Oh, that's a... Pyro, Phantom just missed that ball off the back wall, and our overtime's over. And what did we say? Staunch defense awaiting the mistakes. Who was going to fail first? And it is Central Methodist University. They let up a chance on the, their own backboard. Fanshawe. Fanshaw, they, they've done the crawling back, Bepic. You know, I, I don't want to call such a impressive performance a, a crawl, but I can't help to say it was a position they kind of put themselves in, and now they're realizing the, the true caliber of their opponents. I mean, they had to grind out that overtime for the win. It has been a serious grind for Fanshaw, and I think that makes the 2-2 two -two series scoreline that much more impressive. I mean, the, the wins from CN CMU have been fairly convincing, especially game one, that, that two-goal margin of victory. But 
games three and four, the, the Fanshawe wins, overtime, and they were outshot in both mm. of them. So serious grinds, especially defensively. I mean, eight saves, five of them came from space, and I can remember three of them off the top of my head. So that means they were impressive saves as well, where they had to go ground to crossbar in about half a second to meet a shot that was almost certainly going in if they don't get there to make the block. That was that was an impressive performance out of Fanshawe, and... This is a clutch series out of them. They are finding a way to keep things manageable, keep themselves afloat, and somehow find a way to safety. Yeah, Fanshawe clutch as ever to stay in it, and I'm glad you mentioned space. You mentioned his mm. saves. I'll talk about his attacks. Remember that air dribble yeah. that stuck to the nose of his car? Remember some of these pinching plays? Remember uh, even at, towards the end of overtime, had a pass off the backboard that was in perfect position for Apple Pie to score, but the tempo and the pace of the game wasn't quick oh. enough. Now it's space to demo the shot taker. And since when did demolitions happen up there? That was just a demolition. Oh, hold on. Goals being scored. Vanry going to get credit, but that started with Space's back check on the, the shot taker. You're right. What an impressive demo. Came from behind. Had to fly for a second to find it. That allowed chaos to unfold there in the midfield. And Vanry's back wall to back wall clear turn into a goal. Oh, my goodness. I, 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 pure chaos. In the first 15 seconds of game number five, but sometimes that's what you get in these hard nosed series, and that's what we'll continue for as space continuing just to lead the way for this Fanshawe comeback. Two wins, still only half of the job done in this long best of seven. These wins that you see, even though it's just two and one on the side of CMU, three and oh on the side of Fanshawe, every single win is so well earned and you can tell exactly why in this series an answer needs to be had from cmu adams has 100 boost an answer pretty well we've seen so far in this series and i said it's a pretty nice answer we'll see if it translates to a tick mark on the scoreboard not quite yet and that was a miss from phantom uncharacteristic again but we saw it in overtime small mistakes starting to creep into that star player's game but that's well, why you got teammates to help you out of sticky situations and make sure that slight errors and slight misses don't end up costing too much. And that's nice clear. Again, I believe that got their octane in the middle of that play. Double commit, leave space with a shooting opportunity, but Adams on the goal line should be able to make this save unless there's a certain unnamed slushy Fennec that comes off the back wall for the score. <laughs> Like, listen, Space has been enabling these opportunities for his team all game long. He's just waiting for that teammate that wants to get aggressive enough, that wants to push the envelope, that wants to set the standard of this match. And Vanry answers the call. What a wonderful way to fire up this Fanshawe squad. <laughs> and get them with a lead that, I mean, in some of these low scoring matches or even these close matches does feel comfortable, but oh, they're taken out of that love seat very quickly. A goal for CMU. I was going to bring up the point, which is now very short lived, that that was the first time that Fanshawe found themselves with a two goal lead in this series. And it lasted all of 10 seconds. CMU do find their response. They cut the, the, the SC lead to now one and they get themselves a bit of an advantage off kickoff. We'll see what Gann can do. It's gonna be all about that response now for Fanshawe. If they want to instill that dominance or they want to allow CMU to get their way back into this game. Halfway is the deficit brought back. CMU caught on the, the other end. This just wasn't the case early on in the series. It was completely dominated possession by Central Methodist University. And oh, how far we have come in this series to paint the differently space. That was one more time on the other side. Instead, he's gonna miss the ball. Force Apple Pie is the next defender. Vanry still in rotation to be next up to the plate. Gand and that 50-50 draws the ball into dangerous territory. Yet Adams with all that boost just can't get there. A clustering of octanes to see who can come out with the ball. It moves into space's territory. Taken off of the field. We get back into that grind set, Bepic, of what felt like overtime and uh, leaving chances very thin for each team. This does feel like an overtime at the moment. No one wants to make a big mistake and 
really allow this game five swing game to have a ton of influence on their their demise in this best of seven. Adams doesn't find anything. The defense again prevailing. Apple Pie takes a one timer, caught up to it, but so did. Phantom. Another ball towards net, and Fanry will keep it on net, making it even more so with that second touch. Great goal, and there's the two goalie that only lasted 10 seconds last time. We'll see if it lasts any longer this time around. I will say, I held my breath for that shot from Vanry. Mm -hmm. Just the one little tip of his fennec was able to knock that ball in. And hey, in Rocket League, that is all you need. That two goal lead isn't going to be short lived. Vannery doesn't want that to be the case. Space. Next up to the plate. Looking for a 50 50 off of Gan. Gan trying to take a better position in this game and be more influential. Space. What a rocket to the other side. And Apple Pie so close to reading the shot as well. Could have extended their lead to another record setting lead in this series, but instead it goes the other way. But time is on the side of Fanshawe right now. A minute for CMU to score twice. Andrew couldn't do much with that. The light touch towards Space who sticks with it, finds a second, beats Adams, forces a double commit out of Phantom and Gand, but CMU, they are not cleared. Instead, they get a ball center and Phantom score. I don't know how they managed to keep possession throughout all that chaos, but they do and add a second to their score. And Space, we, we've talked about the presence from this player and how much they, they have led the squad of Fanshawe, but that touch to me just mm. doesn't feel essential. You have two defenders on the goal line ready for the shot to come, but cutting in and knocking off your own backboard just throws the whole unit into chaos. And the chaos will ensue. A miss from Apple Pie on the backboard. And that does force space to make a play. Picking up boost now. He wants a couple extra touches, but missing out on it instead. The double commit on the shot for CMU. Doesn't bode too well for them. Under 30 to score another. We've seen a lot of overtime, Bepic. I'm not counting out CMU quite yet. Definitely not. But Vanry does find a clear. And uh, that was a, a low boost scare for FC and defense. They get out of... But for how long? That was close. A little bit of pressure play being put on the back line of FC by CMU. Apple Pie across the pitch to Space, who can try and stall the rest of this game. Nice flick, but Adam lost this ball along with a 2v1. Gan pops it up in the air. Phantom going to bail out as Vannery has control off the back wall. Still up on triple zeros. Double commit out of FC. And I'm looking for a teammate, but there was no one in the infield. FC storm all the way back from down 0-2 in the series. Now up 3-2. Can't believe they managed to get here. The Fanshawe Fuel, they, they were sitting at the gas station for the first two games, but once they uh, went from E to F, they have not stopped putting the pedal to the metal. Three goals out of Vannery. That's a hat trick. And, you know, again, uh, it's, it's this full team that's able to come mm -hmm. up big. I think Phantom uh, has done so much for CMU, but not enough this time around fanshot they don't right. rest all their weight on one player uh as vanry just that new player to step up in this game game what what's so impressive to me about fc's current status in this series is that all three of their game wins have come while being outshot by cmu and that means their defense that to step up and make a lot of plays find an a lot of important clears and they have so far i'm wondering if that persists for one more game to get them out of this series in six maybe seven or if we see a little bit of a comeback from cmu who haven't been struggling by any means but there there's just been one or two plays that fc outplays them gets them an advantage and then rides their defensive brick wall at times all the way to victory this is an interesting dynamic between these two squads and now in game six it's cmu with their backs against the wall oh certainly is they're finally down in this series exactly where fan shot wants to be and it's a good news for them, but will the kickoff and the ensuing shot be good news as well? They're able to fend it away. I 
do feel as if Fanshawe were able to find this early lead, will they get back in that very staunch defensive situation where uh, they're just not allowing anything for CMU? Uh, they, they're able to contend against anything. Oh my God, speaking of resiliency though, Phantom, what a save on the goal line. Able to stay alive somehow. We almost saw the beginnings of your point being proven, but no, good defense by Phantom, as always. Good pass, as always, by CMU. Adams in for the score. A dynamic duo, not quite, but Gand and Anna and Adams right there. Big duo down the field. Well, don't want to have to worry about Fanshawe having that early lead now. Nope. It doesn't go their way, so CMU instead gets themselves the first goal and they didn't need to spend much time on their opponent's half of the field they're, they're ready to get aggressive they're ready to shift the tempo in their favor when you lose three games in a in a row it does force a change and mm -hmm. you know it, increasing your average speed on the play and saying yes to some challenges rather than the hesitation or the no could work it's swinging them in their favor and forcing a little bit of chaos on the side of fc so we'll, we'll see if that's the case as they still have the lead and possession phantom good rest down to the goal line but it's canned next to the plate and this is where fc looked so good previously in this series not right here per se uh, talking about the offense but I'll, I'll shift to the other side of the field fc's moving forward and forcing cmu into defense and that's a nice pass. Adams can't get around. It didn't have boost to shoot. And three minute mark, just about being hit. The first two minutes, definitely won by CMU, but that is slipping. FC's moving forward. Space, uh, pass across the blue box. Doesn't translate into a shot. At least not one that goes in. Not one that goes in, not yet. They have been very, very close though. Adams, full boost, what's that read? That double, almost a triple, a long clear from Vanry. Gan has to get a better clear than that. Oh no, space just menacing in their opponent's zone, waiting for a mistake. That's exactly what he was looking for to cherry pick a goal. Gan got just a little bit too boost greedy, crept inches too far up the field to grab a 12 pad to have, let's see, that'd be, 20 36 boost that'd just some quick math right there but even though they had the boost their positioning put themselves in a weird spot almost found it back though that's what cmu's done so well in this series is answer quickly but the defense of fc another strength i'm talking about uh, for one of these two teams pyro it prevails again keeping this game tied keeping fc with a lot of momentum on their side after finding that last goal and what will keep these two teams to prevail? Because uh, you'd expect as the series goes along, the, these teams, these players, they get more synergized. But we just got off of a moment where uh, two players from CMU were defending a ball at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it, it collected into two shot takers in a row, double committing for fan shots. So uh, I don't know what it's really going to take at this point. Maybe the solo play endeavors. Phantom so close to the reset couldn't get it. The shot from Gan could be enough and it will. It was a slow roller. It took a little time, but sometimes good things come that way. Gan gets the go ahead for CMU. Even with CMU on match point, or I guess it's FC on match point, CMU having to win to stay alive in this series, they still go for slow plays like that where they fake space who just looks like they're on ice flying through their own box trying to save a shot that doesn't come until a little bit later. That's so, so good out of CMU. Staying calm in these difficult spots to find their way out of and that's the seven series. And now right back to it, Adams a double near post. Saved by apple pie, but CMU, they're back in the kitchen. They're starting to cook. Oh, boy. Something tells me it's something spicy as well. Because uh, Fanshawe, they, they've come out with a lot. But you just expect it to be across the whole field at this point. Shots ringing out from anywhere on the field right now. Phantom, he scored from long before. He'll follow that touch with a second, a third even to put it mid. Perfect position for CMU to get a hold of, but no shots hit the counter. Gans not quick enough to that. Phantom sends towards the goal line, but 
And it's effectively giving away possession. Long touches for both teams. Keep this ball in limbo. Oh. Keep the possession away. Get past two defenders from the flick and bump combination. It's still not enough for CMU to tack on the tally of the board. CMU's locked in, though. They are playmaking like it's nobody's business. These flicks, these fakes, these passes. Immaculate. But now they got to defend. Final 15. Space off the bar. Ball stays out. That one hurts if you're FC, but can't hurt for too long to get right back to it. Down one. Final 10. And it'll start from their own end. Fanry. It's a ball center. Space. Has some time. Has a little bit of space, but Adams closes the gap. We're going to game seven. Oh, it was just meant to be. Mr. Bepic, it, it feels <laughs> that way. Fanshawe, it was too much of a pipe dream to get four wins in a row after switching from the, the Scarab set to the main cars. No, Central Methodist University had to instill in themselves that yes, we can still beat this Fanshawe team even when they're not playing in Scarabs. And there you go, there's the reassurance, but Reassurance, it's not enough to win this series. You've got to win more than a game here at this point. You've got to get four on the board. It's just amazing that both of these teams have dropped three games, Bepic, because uh, let's not forget, you know, Fanshawe, they, they came into this series only dropping three games right. total in their three matches before this. This is a worthy contender. These are two good teams. I think you and I have both learned that throughout this series. Even when they were in Scarabs, FC still looked pretty darn good. Just lost a little bit of that lethality that we saw quickly develop in games three through six and will still hopefully be on display in game seven. I feel like at this point, if Fanshawe finds a way to outshoot CMU, it's their game. They just have to pile on the pressure, which may not be in their DNA. That may not be how they like to play, but they have been outshot in all six games that we have played so far, and they've still won half of them. So if they find a way to keep CMU pinned back, then CMU may have a tough time winning game seven, but that hasn't been the case so far, and it might not be in the final game of this series. We'll see what happens. We'll see who steps up. Space has been a player to watch, and I'll watch him carry this ball pristinely down the field nice save though by Adams I love how it's phantom and space to get those first shots to register for this game because if this comes down to player versus player that is the matchup that I am looking at and I'm also keeping an eye on those shot counts as well space wants to tack on the tally but look who comes in to finish the play Van Rees says sorry not quick enough let me invoke some lightning into the shot and he Puts that right under the crossbar. That was a phenomenally executed play. Space with the control to start it off and then the communication to dip underneath the ball. But that was about as close a fake as you can get without actually touching the ball. And the defense bit. Not expecting Vannery to shoot that on target. Not prepared to save it. Nicely done. IFC and well, I mean they've they've outshot CMU so far two to one. We'll have to maintain that, but a one goal lead is definitely the, the more important of the two stats that I've just brought up. Most certainly, yeah, goals on the board. That's what counts as the result. Most certainly, oh, oh Phantoms and Adams was the coming in English or Spanish. Who knows? It almost linked up perfectly, but they're. Just won't get the cut there. Instead, the duo to watch is Ben, Space, and Vanry. That's not the first time that Vanry had kind of bailed out Space of a play that wouldn't be quick enough. He's uh, made his mark in terms of just uh, throwing his car towards the goal line and uh, hoping that it works out in the end. And oh, many times it has. That backflip not good enough for Fanshawe to take away the ball. Instead, it puts the ball into a pretty dangerous position. Phantom shot does get denied, so good aerial presence from Fanshawe as they work the, their way to the other end. Surviving these shots from CMU is going to continue to just be so important as they look to hold on to this lead. Good patience from Space, though, in the midfield. Gets a little bit of agency on the FC side. They're slowly moving down to that blue end. They're forcing difficult challenges to be made. Vannery now up in Space forced there by Adams but the ball went there as well and came down to earth in the Gans hands and they'll find a clear for now still duking it out in that center third no one with real control at the moment but it's falling back into the hands of FC Adams once again being challenged by space a little bit of revenge from earlier but 
It's still CMU that comes out on top, trying to find that answer. Trying to find another shot on target. Space almost had it, but Phantom will be there to collect the ball that just glances off the back wall harmlessly. Uh, Space just has to be grimacing at some of these situations because they're great plays and it's part of his positioning and his mindset as well to try and pull off these redirects, these uh, fancy air dribbles, but a lot of them just cut short or just by the wayside. He's wishing that those posts were a little wider, that crossbar a little taller, but instead playing some standardized Rocket League here. No Rocket Labs. Space. Reset. Is it enough to push him even farther? Vanry wants to control this ball. This is smart. Earn himself an extra touch. Space hops but jumps away from the play instead. Allows Apple Pie to fill in the slot. Got a shot. Not enough. Sends it to the side. Get into that position where Central Methodist University, we may see them just get more aggressive. We may see them put all of it on the line here. That's a situation where it could have been. But instead, Apple Pie clears it to the corner. Great boost management leads to a clearance and a shot. Adams and Phantom. That's the dynamic duo that I was looking at coming into this series, and they combined for the score here, but Pyro, I, I was watching them in defense, CMU. They had just had both their corner booths stolen by FC players, and I, I tabbed through all three blue cars. They had half tanks full to make that transition play happen. They turn into a shooting opportunity, and then they find a second goal on top of that. This CMU roster is so impressive, and after playing so long in the defensive end they break out score to grab the lead incredible what a turnaround for central methodist university <laughs> we have fanshaw out shooting cmu right now but guess what they're not out scoring <laughs> what will it take at this point for this team to close out a series it's gonna take the most finessing the best plays that you've ever seen from these players to win out against cmu a team who really wants to even the records at three and one for the both of them will it happen in the final minute only time can tell adams guarding that midfield line their life depends on it of course all three orange cars up off the ground wasting boost in that play, but same to be said here. It's an open net for Apple Pie to turn on, and they cut too hard. They squander a chance to tie up this game in game seven. Maybe a little bit of nerves, I'm not sure, but either way, that is a huge opportunity missed. Thought Fanshaw had the god mental, but it's all getting to them now. 30 seconds, and Adams looking for Gandhi's oh. there. The shot's there as well. Takes it past the final defender, and CMU, they're taking it all the way. That is the most painful swing of a play that I've seen in a long time. The missed open net and then insurance found by CMU not 10 seconds later. Fake kickoff. Trying to shake things up for fan shot. Actually, to a near shot. Rebound. No apple pie underneath the ball. That took a glance off the blue back wall. 10 seconds left. That's a fourth found. Adams. CMU, I think they might have just sealed game seven in this series. CMU says, see you later, Fanshaw. Those goals in this last minute do more than seal the deal. Game seven asks who will be the team that clutches up, ices up, has the best plays in store, has learned the most at the end of the day and it is gonna be central methodist university to win a week four of ecac against fanshaw a consolation prize for fanshaw will come in the form of a goal but cmu stays on top i'm glad that the, the three goalie was cut down on that zero second play because that game deserved to be a much closer affair than the scoreboard indicated a last second avalanche out of CMU clinches them the series, but hats off to Fanshaw coming out first two games in Scarabs. They win the next three straight once they change out of the Scarabs, all in one goal affairs while they were outshot. And then they dropped the last two to CMU just to show us. CMU showed us in those last two games just how resilient they are. And now, I mean, they've got a three and one series record to show for it. And that was just a fun seven game set. It was fun, Mr. Vepic. It was it was a journey, let's say it, it at that. I mean, it almost makes you think of the 
influence that the format change from ECAC from best of five to best of seven truly has. If it's a best of five, that's a win for Fanshawe. They win three games in their main cars. It's over. Instead, those last two games are where Central Methodist University were able to learn enough, counteract the strategy of Fanshawe, and come out with the win. That speaks to the endurance of this team and really the challenges that they can face again and again and overcome. So very impressive at the end of the day from Central Methodist University. Folks, we are going to hope for an interview. I think we are going to get an interview yes, from please, Phantom please. after this break. It does appear so. Folks, we'll be back very shortly with just that. University's way. It's a nice ball center, but no one quite there to receive the pass from Adams. So, minute in, we've seen a lot of time spent on the orange end, and finally something to show for it. Yeah, we was able to drift and cut into the midfield, take it up the wall with no contest, and that's why you gotta worry about it. On the blue end. Gonna keep it there and register a shot as well. Still three to yep. zero on the yep. side of CMU, but wipe that all away. We've got our first scarab shot to the back of the net. The rest of this series. Remember again, a long series here, folks. Best of seven. A first win is certainly what you want, but it will not Ooh. tell the full result. What is that too, Epic? It is not right. just to take a professional look at this game and always have hard comms, but have fun with it too. Cars are blowing up from every other end of the field. And as we stay kind of stamp put here with the 4 1 score line and more demolitions. No, we will not stay still. Hater a boost is taken off of the field. Another goal line demolition on the side of FC. They've only got one player for a moment there. They're trying to recollect. They're trying to reposition. But how do you position around a pinpoint accurate shot like this? Gand goes crossbar down for the first goal. Adam. Real plays we see tonight, but Adams couldn't quite get around the ball. Instead, Apple Pie forcing an own goal off of the Adams octane right there. A little awkward at times. Here, I'm wondering if it's going to get capitalized upon or if their offense is going to make up for things with a play like that. Yeah, Phantom was one of those players who we were expecting that was in the lane, but threading the needle, they were able to equalize and we're right back in business. Ooh, Adams the pop to Gand. No, Adams going to finish it off themselves. Starting to lay the foundations of pressure. And then the final several shots in this game. Maybe just one. Oh, there's the shot I was hoping to have out of that play. It's space instead of Vanry, but I'll take it. Great ball. Seven. We'll see if they can find it. Yeah, because if CMU oh. don't take this win, well, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, Pepe. That's the goal right there. Probably never seen before, and players you've never played against, and you still have to find ways to score. Speaking of which, Phantom and Adams, dynamic duo, open up the scoring in four. Well, there you go, Central Methodist University. Goal there, it's a wide open net, especially after the demolition, but just sent it to the side. Adams looking for the top corner again, can't find it, and Apple Pie doesn't dive quickly enough. Phantom scores again for Central Methodist. Face looks for uh, the dunk on that ball, and Vanry actually is going to have a look. The defender's very slow to it. Vanry, is there a reset? There's an extra touch. It's off of the post, and the clash on the goal line sees out a first goal for Fanshawe. Be very synergized, but it can be those small. All moments when both players jump to the ball. What? Did offer a moment for their opposition? Fanshawe, they're coming up with this goal as Vanry skies to the ceiling and pinches it. Are you kidding me? Has to cut the rotation to kick it to the corner. Gan trying to clear and uh, deliver themselves from this pressure, but Space just has more to say for. Off the ceiling, trying to get it to Vanry with that heavy touch, but defense will get no oh that's a, a py pyro phantom just missed that ball off the back wall and oh, the pace of the game wasn't quick oh. enough now it's space to demo the shot taker and since when the demolitions happen up there that was just a demolition oh hold on goals being scored vanry going to get credit but that started with space's back check and i believe that at their octane in the middle of that play. Double commit, leaves space with a shooting opportunity, but Adams on the goal line should be able to make this save unless there's a certain unnamed slushy Fennec that comes off the back wall for the score. I believe that, I mean, in some of these low scoring matches or even these close matches does feel comfortable, but 
Oh, they're taken out of that love seat very quickly. Pai takes a one-timer. Caught up to it, but so did Phantom. Another ball towards net, and Fanry will keep it on net, making it even more so with that second touch. Great goal, and there's the two goal lead that only lasted 10. This is a double commit out of Phantom and Gand, but CMU, they are not cleared. Instead, they get a ball center, and Phantom score. I don't know how they managed to keep possession throughout all that chaos. As always, good pass, as always, by CMU. Adams in for the score. A dynamic duo, not quite, but Gand and Anna and Adams right there. Big duo down the field. Oh, don't want to have to worry about Fanshawe having that. Van Rie. Gand has to get a better clear than that. Oh, no. Space just menacing in their opponent's zone, waiting for a mistake. That's exactly what he was looking for to cherry pick a goal. Gand can get it. The shot from Gan could be enough, and it will. It was a slow roller. It took a little time, but sometimes good things come that way. Gand gets the go ahead for CMU. Shot counts as well. Space wants to tack on the tally, but look who comes in to finish the play. Van Rie says, sorry, not quick enough. Let me invoke some lightning into the shot. And he puts that right under the crossbar. That's a situation where it could have been, but instead Apple Pie clears it to the corner. Great boost management leads to a clearance and a shot. Adams and Phantom. That's the dynamic duo that I was looking at coming into this series. Pleasure. Shooting opportunity, and then they find a second goal on top of that. This CMU roster is so impressive, and after playing so long in the defensive end, they break out, score two, grab the lead. And Adams looking for Gan. He's oh. there. The shot's there as well. Takes it past the final defender, and CMU, they're taking it all the way. Blue back wall. Ten seconds left. That's a fourth found. Adams, CMU. I think they might have just sealed game seven in this. Round of a series, folks. ECAC on the Esports YouTube broadcast. And we just saw Central Methodist University win in game seven against Fanshawe Fuel. And not just that, folks. We've got Phantom on the line for an interview. So, Phantom, welcome on in. We've got your uh, CMU banner up here to, to show for yourself. And, and you know what? We could talk about the how you doing, all that good stuff. But let's just get into the nitty gritty. Okay, you're up against an undefeated team. How do you prepare for a squad like that? And then what's your reaction when you see three scarabs on the field? Mm -hmm. Okay, so... First off, just to talk about the fact that they're undefeated, uh, we don't actually care about somebody's win-loss streak. At the end of the day, the game is a game. You take it game by game. So I don't care, honestly, who we're up against. At the, at the end of the day, we play our best, and if we win, we win. We lose, we lose. So their win, their win streak didn't really matter to us. As for the three scarabs, uh, Flakes has proven himself. It doesn't matter your car as long as you're good. So you don't really let that bother you either. Just play your game how you know how, and then see how it goes. Great, Great mindset, right. yeah. I mean, that, that's what you did coming in with that two-game lead and then, unfortunately, losing three straight. And I'm wondering what you guys said to each other going into game six, now down on a series that you had led pretty dominantly at the beginning. What, what, what flipped to win those two straight? Uh, honestly, it was all about mental. So, like, just keeping comms up, uh, making sure we're staying positive. Like, you have players have a really big tendency to, like, kind of let those consecutive losses uh, do that. And the real big thing, like, Rocket League is all about momentum switches, right? So as mm -hmm. soon as we take that one or two goal lead in that one game, it's all about keeping that momentum at that point, making sure we can just finish out the series. And then, like, don't even, like, worry about the losses. It's it, Not only is it game by game, it's goal by goal, all right? So, like, just, like, gain that momentum and, like, pull it through till the end. Like, that's all we had to do. Yeah, and you that. did game yeah. seven was Ooh, a all the way to game seven yeah it, it was clutch antics from you all at cmu and i wonder if that speaks to the team as a unit ha has it been these long drawn out series all the way throughout in this new best of seven format phantom or uh ha have you been very winning very losing and uh, what are your expectations moving forward in this season as well um Honestly, I try not to hold many expectations as our team is constantly changing currently. We're, we're recruiting quite actively. So oh. for our current team, I'm just trying to uh, just hold a positive mindset, like play the best we can. Uh, and, and as for the past and how we've done, we actually we haven't lost but one game in ECAC and all of our series have either been 4-0 or 4-1. 
Uh, so this is the first time we've been brought to Game 7. Fair enough. Well, Epic, you heard it from himself. He, this is a great team and probably has a solid future as well. I, I love the mentality. I love the insight into your mind and your expectations for this team or, or lack thereof. It's it's honestly very impressive to be holding that at uh, the collegiate level. But you got any shout outs before we, we let you go uh, to celebrate your victory? To be honest, just thank you guys for casting. I hope you guys enjoy and oh. make sure to follow Pyro on Twitter because he follows me. He's a goat. <laughs> <laughs> uh Bepic, that must be the first time that we've been a part of right? the shout out let alone the thank the you. lone shout outs i cannot believe it well <laughs> phantom thank you so much for the interview thank you for being a part of this congratulations on your win and folks that does do it for us tonight for this match it's incredible incredible match central methodist university go on for another win against fanshawe i think it's safe to say they have a very bright future for us for prof layton in the back end for my good friend again and wonderful caster mr bepic thank you for a wonderful time here and for myself pyro j at esports u2 this is going to be it for us tonight congratulations again to cmu and we'll see you all next time other jobs as well that That's can right. translate out of this experience in esports the the only path is not just as a player um, i think all of us are representative of jobs in esports but it, it it mirrors traditional sports in pretty much the same way you've got you know broadcasters you've got production people you've got marketing and sales and um, now nil and and things like that but um, really, esports is kind of a great accelerator, accelerator uh, for a lot of new businesses that are coming up in the metaverse and Web3. And there's a lot of new technology that is going to be needed. And so these these STEM students that are also esports athletes are really the the future workforce and leaders of tomorrow. And you know, us as well as all of our brand partners that we work with really recognize this. And I think that's really, you know, a key driver of why brands are in this space. They want to be part of building that future workforce and leadership and shaping it and supporting it. So, yeah, it's 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 very it's been a very interesting space to watch. And we, we offer such a big, uh, you know, we offer such a big counterpart to traditional sports also, because. When it's a counterpart, but it's also the same, is what I'm trying to say. Because it, it, when you're traditional sports and they're done after their two a day workout and they're done after their practice scrim, they're coming home to play Call of Duty and relax and put their feet up and get a drink and play video games. It grows their brain, problem solving skills, uh, and, and their hand eye coordination while they're home. Hand eye coordination, if you're a football player, massive skill, massive skill. So mm -hmm. um, it helps build those things while they're off the field. And then for us, vice versa, if you're an esports athlete, one of the errors I had growing up when I was competing in esports is that I was not active enough. I, I played sports, I competed a little bit, but I wasn't active enough truly when I look at it. So that's one area that esports players can learn from in terms of activity and physical and the marrying of both. People say, oh, sports and esports, video games. Not really. We're just kind of the tech industry's competitive uh, form of um, competition as to where traditional sports are more physical hands-on. So I believe in the marrying of these two sectors and that they actually live together while also being counterparts well i think i think then to speak to something about marrying right from traditional to esports um that to me speaks to this whole new thing at least uh, again from you guys right you guys have more traditional sports background right paul leave mike um and all that but i think let's talk nil then because i think that's something that i think is really interesting that at least when i heard about it right of what we're trying to do with you know esports athletes schools programs in general um, because it wasn't something you would think normally, right? You could understand, right, football player on the field, star quarterback. It makes sense, right? The guy is somebody that everybody knows on campus, whether you're, you know, whether you're on the team, off the team, or you're just going to the school. It makes sense. But I think, you know, nowadays it's it's not as common or people don't think that they could be somebody that their name is out there, right? Or that they know they're known, right? As, as we're growing the space, as we're, we're putting this together, it almost feels really interesting that, you know, star – your star entry, you know, your star entry in Valorant or your your star forward on Rocket League, right? Whatever the case might be, now 
they can have nil deals it's a it's a thing out yeah. there and, and i think i don't know maybe mike you want to start off but yeah like, yeah, yeah i think yeah thank you for teeing that up so uh i was talking for too long i uh, i forgot to bring nil into the mix so it's a common occurrence uh, occupational hazard so i would say that uh so nil for for uh, i'm sure most of you watching understand what it is but nil stands for name, image, and likeness. Name, image, and likeness, that term has been utilized to describe the transition of traditional student athletes, NCAA athletes, and their ability to monetize their name, image, and likeness. It went live July 1st, 20 of 21, and it has continued over the course of the last 14, nearly 14 months now. Uh, it's an interesting term because it's been co-opted to describe the NCAA's approach to student athletes being able to make endorsement money or uh, be able to monetize any part of their name, image, and likeness, but it's been around forever, right? We've had athletes endorsing brands for over 100 years. Babe Ruth of the New York Yankees was endorsing brands 100 years ago, and it has continued onward from baseball cards all the way through now, where we have lots of different integrations of how uh, influencers can monetize their followings. So what I would say on the traditional side is it's still a very young space. There are a lot of stories out there regarding NIL that tend to focus on the negative or how out of control, I put in air quotes, it has gotten. But there is still a burgeoning marketplace for many more student athletes that are involved. About 17% of NCAA athletes are currently involved in NIL, but 65% more than that want to get involved and are curious how to get started. On the flip side, brands are challenged with a few different things in the space. There are 10,000 professional athletes in the United States. Once July 1st, 